What's up, everybody? It's Aaron Duncan here with the Necessary Blunt and the Sports Talk. Back again with another Panthers video, and I'm not going to lie, this is a tough one. And the sad part is, it's not the first time I've said that this is a tough one, because this is probably the low for the season. You know what I'm saying? We took some bullpens this year, yeah, from the 49ers and the Falcons, but this is a low point. We lost to the formerly 2-9 and nine Washington Redskins, who had a rookie starting quarterback, so... We got a lot to discuss in this video, man. There's a lot of things going on in this game, man. So make sure you guys hit the subscribe button below. Like I said, I'm Aaron Duncan, and on this video, I get recap and analysis of the Panthers, man. So make sure you don't miss any videos. So make sure you got to hit that bell icon and get a video a thumbs up, too, while you're at it, man. So let's go ahead and get into it. But hey, man, real quick, before we get into it, man, let me know down below in the comments, what's the most frustrating thing about this team for you, man? Like, what's really grinding your gears? Because there's a lot for me that's grinding my gears, but let me know down below in the comments the things that are bothering you about this team. I mean, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Like, this is this is painful to watch. Like, literally painful to watch. Like, I was sick to my stomach watching this game, and yet another loss on this season because the inability to score from the one-yard line. How many times do we have to lose in this fashion? How many times do we have to get our hearts broken in this fashion? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just tired of it. I'm going to expect that if we don't get it in on a longer play, we're probably not getting in from the one. You know what I'm saying? We got one of the best running backs in the league, but we can't pound it in from the one. Our running game is terrible from the one, and our passing game is even worse. You know what I'm saying? This is the fourth game that's, ha that's come down to the scenario where we've been on the one-yard line. We haven't been able to get it done. Just think if we got those things done, the team would might, may not be 5-7. and seven. They could easily be 9-3 and three in control of the division and getting ready for a playoff run. But no, we can't score from the one-yard line, whether it's the Bucks, whether it's the Saints last week. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's the Packers in the snow. You know what I'm saying? It happens every time. You can almost count on it, man. It's going to happen that if we get it out to the one-yard line, we seem to not be able to punch it in, and it's extremely frustrating. And the worst part about today is on the final two plays, you can clearly see on third down that Christian McCaffrey was pretty much open in the flats, and Kyle Allen didn't even look his way, let alone on the fourth down where he fumbled the ball and got stripped that Jerry's right was pretty much butt naked wide open on the right side of the end zone again. And Kyle Allen didn't even bat an eye towards him. So it really makes you wonder, what is he seeing on the field? Like, is his vision cone like they used to have on Madden just this small where he can't see anything at all? Because he was missing wide open guys. Like, he didn't even give them a look. You know what I'm saying? In that last play, we didn't even have a chance. He didn't even try to chuck the ball up. We didn't have a chance to even see it play out. And it, it, it makes, my, makes my head hurt, man. And there was times in this game we really couldn't remember who was the 2-9 and nine team and who was actually still trying to hold on to slim playoff hopes. Because the Panthers really didn't show much fight outside of the first quarter at all. And that's the most frustrating part because under this Ron Rivera tenure and pretty much in the franchise's history, we have a bad habit of playing down to competition and it came back to bite us today. In the first quarter, offensively, man, we moved the ball through their defense like a hot knife through butter and... It was like, okay, this is going to be easy. The first drive, we come down, boom, boom, boom. Eight plays, 60-something yards, okay, doom. Hitting Curtis Samuel for a four-yard touchdown. We dancing in the end zone, you know what I'm saying? Next drive, they get the ball. We go three and out. Two of the play, All three of those plays were negative plays, and it looks like we're about to be all over this rookie quarterback, Dwayne Haskins, and then we come back and get the ball back ourselves, go down the field 55 yards, and boom, score a touchdown with Kurt, me, uh, DJ Moore. Excuse me. He's rocking the cradle because he just had a newborn baby. Congratulations to him. And it's 14-0 before you can even say, Go Carolina Panthers. And after that, we pretty much put the thing in cruise control. And the sad part is, is I thought to myself, like, dang, we got this game in the bag. We're 10-point favorites according to Vegas. You know what I'm saying? This is going to be a boring game to watch because the Redskins are just that bad. And we're not that horrible, but I know we're definitely better than the Redskins. So I'm thinking they're just going to lay down. We're going to bury this 2-9 and nine team. They're tanking for the draft. No. Uh, apparently, the players on the Panthers locker room thought the same thing because they looked like they pretty much just mailed it in from there. And that's the thing. As a fan, we can, we're allowed to think that. You know what I'm saying? We're at home. We're not getting paid millions of dollars to do this stuff. But players, these are grown men that you're going against. They're not going to lay down. This is not college. This is not Georgia versus Georgia Tech. You know what I'm saying? This is not South Carolina versus Clemson where you just blow them out and guys know that they're just not good, better than you because they don't have the talent or the resources because of recruiting. This is the NFL, man. Guys are getting paid. Guys are getting paid. 
Guys are getting paid. They have a level of pride. They're not going to take this stuff lightly. And they're going to come back and punch you back in the mouth after you punch them in the mouth initially. And that's exactly what the Redskins did. And the most embarrassing thing was seen to be like a lack of effort down the stretch. You can kind of see once they started breaking some runs because we couldn't stop the run all day that guys were just arm tackling. They were just kind of throwing themselves at the guys trying to make plays and they just weren't putting in the effort. They weren't completely running down plays. They weren't wrapping up. It just seemed like it, we didn't want it. And I hate to say that because I don't want to call on the character of some of these guys or pull their card like that, but the lack of physical effort just showed, and it was obvious. You could feel it oozing through your TV screen that they didn't care about what happened today, and they just thought that it was over after the first quarter. And the sad part is you know they're going to come out and try to run the ball on you because they have a rookie quarterback who hasn't been good pretty much all year this year. The team is questioning if he will be a draft bust or not, even though it's only been a few starts. They have two decent running backs that they have can be effective every now and then, but you know they're going to try to run the ball with Adrian Peterson and Darius Geis, and that's exactly what they did. And I never thought I would say this because the Panthers have always been known for having a solid defense, but it seems to me that we've become that get-right team. You know what a get-right team is? A team that when you're having a bad season or a bad time and you're struggling through your season, when you come to play the Carolina Panthers, you can get right because you know they're going to be able to give up that run. You know the Washington Redskins were the fifth worst rushing team in the NFL, averaging only 80 some yards per game. You know what I'm saying? I know you probably heard it during the broadcast. Darius Geis only had a career high of 32 yards in the game. This guy went off for 120 plus yards. Adrian Peterson had 99 himself. As a team, they almost tripled their average 250 yards rushing in the NFL. No, we're not playing Navy. It's not college where they're running the wing tee. They lined up and ran it right down our throat, and there was nothing we could do about it. I know we have some defensive linemen that are out with KK Short being out, now Terry Poe being out, you know what I'm saying, with guys being banged up. Jeremy McCoy has been in and out of the lineup. Vernon Butler got hurt during the game. But I don't care, bro. There's levels to this, man. You got to have a sense of pride yourself. When a guy is running down your throat, that means that there's nothing really complicated about run blocking. You literally just line up in front of somebody and you say, hey, I'm going to push you backwards and the guy behind me is going to run to the spot where you used to be. And that's exactly what they continue to do time in and time out for a total of almost 250 yards. And it's so disheartening. It makes you feel less like a man when you just get tossed around like that during the running game. Take it from somebody that's played football and has played defense. Being able to stop the run says a lot, but not being able to stop the run. It's like you're helpless, man. It's just bleeding, and it's death by a thousand paper cuts. I never thought I'd say this, but I can honestly say that I was embarrassed today to be a Panthers fan. You know what I'm saying? The Falcons lost was bad indeed because the Falcons have been garbage this year, but it's a division game. You can chalk that up. We knew the Falcons actually had a lot of talent. They just were underachieving and had injuries, and their coaches probably on the hot seat and on the way out too. So we were like, all right, we can excuse that. The Falcons, they did beat the Saints the, year, the week before. So we knew, okay, all right, whatever. So that was painful, but it wasn't all that. Today... With the Redskins not beating the Panthers at Bank of America Stadium since 1998, with them having a rookie quarterback, with them having an interim head coach, with them having one of the worst run games in the league, and beating us and scoring all those unanswered points in this game, it was so disheartening. And I know we had that little late effort to come back, but the Redskins were showing why they were the Redskins. They were pretty much giving us free yardage to get back in the game. And to me, when you have an onside kick in the game and you actually recover it, with the NFL pretty much deleting it from the league with the change of rules being with not being able to get a running start, if you actually get an onside kick, which is only a 4% chance to get it now this year, when you actually get one and you have a chance, I feel like it's a waste of opportunity because those things don't come around too often and you get that thing ha it happened for you and you still couldn't take advantage. So that's what made me feel even worse about it. This team has a world of problems, man, and I just don't know where to start to fix all this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because the offensive line can't stay healthy. The defensive line can't stay healthy. When the offensive line is in there, they still can't block a soul. We got receivers and running backs and people dropping passes. You know what I'm saying? And we can't stop the run. There's a lot of stuff going on. We can't score from the one yard line. We can't tackle when we want to. We can't get a pass rush with more with the, uh, only four guys. And I, it just, I, I don't, it's a world of hurt and I don't know where to start to fix this stuff. And the worst part about it is that despite all the troubles and all the garbage and how bad we played, we still had a chance and we have a quarterback that cannot see wide open men on the field that are 
clear I thought was in that vision when he ran the play, but we still had opportunities and we still couldn't execute when it matters the most. When you see stuff like this happening from the one yard line time and time again, you got to blame execution on the players and you got to blame play calling on the coaches. For us to not do pretty much anything until garbage time in the fourth quarter from the first quarter on, it really is an indictment on our coaching staff. The, the game plan was stale. Running Christian McCaffrey two times in a row and then trying to pass or trying to pass and running Christian McCaffrey on third down is stale. Throwing a Christian McCaffrey on simple screen routes that worked against everybody else is stale. They obviously knew what was going on. Why not mix it up? Why not run a couple trick plays that are a little bit more complicated than the stupid trap plays and end arounds you want to run every so often at DJ? Why not run some screens to some guys that can get at their, uh, get, do some things with the ball in their hands after the catch like DJ Moore and Curtis Samuel? Why not run simple screen routes? Why not run some screens in the middle of the field? to uh, CMC. Why not give the ball to Greg Olsen every now and then? Um, and prayers up for Greg Olsen. I know he took that bad hit on that concussion. It looked terrible. His body went kind of stiff, so prayers up for him. But why not get him involved more instead of just the one or two few plays that he gets every so often, the scrapes and scraps that he's gotten? He still can get open. He still has very dependable hands. Why not utilize him? And it just it's, it's hard to watch this team, man. And I'm almost ready for the season to be over. And like you guys know, if you know me, I don't, I love, there's nothing more that I love more than football season. And I'm almost ready for the season to be over. And it's only, we still have four weeks to go. I'll be going to the Falcons game next week. I'm mad I spent my money on that. And I'm not sure what Ticketmaster's refund policy is, but it's pretty much too late for me. I'll just be going for the fellowship and the do what I got to do at tailgate. You know what I'm saying? So, it's tough, man. It seems like Ron Rivera's days are likely numbered in Carolina, and he's starting to get those questions from the media. He's starting to feel the pressure because that seat is hot. The seat is hot. The seat is hot. I'll say that. I'll make another video about how hot his seat is coming up this week. But without further ado, man, I'm Aaron Duncan signing off for the Necessary Blunt and Sports Talk. You guys let me know down below in the comments what you thought about the game, man. What do you think the biggest problem is for the Panthers? What frustrates you the most about this team this year, man? Let me know down below in the comments. But without further ado, I'm signing off. I'll see you next time.